around, so I, uh, I just changed one thing about our presentation today. We're not going to show the Rio Ontario bridge, but we're going to show a bridge in France, it's a suspension bridge. Um, so for that bridge, uh, we are actually an integrator. So what we do is that we take sensors, uh, some of them that you actually have seen today, we put all that together uh, on, the, on, on the bridge depending on the application, whatever it's, uh, it's uh, to measure loads, to measure traffic, uh, train, um, displacement, and so on. So we take all that, uh, we build the acquisition unit uh, to do that, again, with some of the products that we have uh, used today, depending on the use uh, for a particular structure. And uh, we integrate all that together with a system which allows the users, or the end user in this case, to uh, have all that information, whatever the, the sensor they're going to use to have all that information in one. So what I'm going to show you today is actually a live version of uh, what we uh, are currently monitoring on, on, the, on the site. And I will show you uh, a couple of things. First, the, the actual uh, live acquisition system directly on site and a remote view, a live web-based view of the system afterwards. You will also show uh, indirectly what we call the more watchdog. Um, the watchdog is what we call a monitoring system, monitoring the monitoring system. And what we have that is to make sure that all system works 24-7 all year long, to make sure that there is no interruption, and if there is, at least we know about it. Uh, the bridge I'm going to show is, is called the Tancarli Bridge, uh, the western part of France. It was built in 1955. Uh, the length, the total length of the bridge is over 4,000 feet. Uh, and the, our clients are concerned on the movement, especially at the abutments, at the beginning and the end of the bridge. Um, so when we designed the system, we had four practical items in mind. The first one, we needed something that was customizable, because again, we used sensors from different vendors. So we needed a system that, that was flexible for that. The second thing, obviously, for the, the client, is the, the main question is, is the system safe? And uh, for that, we have obviously a live monitoring and the ability to set up thresholds and alerts uh, directly on site and to receive those alerts via you know, your cell phone or your email and so on. The next thing we need is something that was reliable, so a system that works as much as possible 24 7 and that can warn us if something goes down, like the power or the communication. And finally, something very uh, user friendly for the, for the client. This is a picture of the bridge, so as I was saying, it's a suspension bridge. And I'm going to show you two things. So I'm going to actually, there we go, connect now uh, to the system. So this is the view, like a general view of the system. Uh, and we remotely connected to the system right now. And if actually I choose one of the nodes uh, on the system, you're going to be able to see uh, the temperature here, displacement. You have a side view here of the bridge with the placements of the sensor, the green dots indicate the sensor. If it's green, it means that the sensor is all right. We have color code to indicate if there is an alert or if the sensor is down for any reason. And here you have the actual current value of the bridge right now uh, in France, in there. And those color here that you see again shows the thresholds that were set up by the clients for the alerts that he can receive. So if he wants to see the system light, that's what he would do. But you also have the ability to, uh, to have a web view of the system. And this one is used for multiple things. The first one is to know if the, is the system all right, are all the components OK, and to view eventually the uptime, the uptime and downtime of the system. So if something is wrong, you will know this sensor has lost power, this sensor has lost communication, and so on. And the two next things, usually, that um, we can view is the first thing is what we call events. So when there has been an issue when a threshold has been reached on a bridge is going to be recorded here. It's going to be sent via web mail, via mail or via a phone call. It's also going to be locked. So when you receive the alert, you can look back in there and see which, which sensor started the threshold and what's the current situation with this sensor. So you can go back in time and view all the events that you have on the bridge. And if needed, you can go then to the historical data uh, of the bridge. So you can view either day by day in there, or you can choose to view uh, on the weekly basis, or on a monthly basis. We use that to look at trends over the bridge and to, to help define or refine the thresholds. 
And when I want to view uh, additional information, I can select some or all of the sensors uh, on that bridge and view that direct information and then learn from that. I think that's it. Thank you very much.